information or secrets about our governments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody who is uh, listening in or watching. Um, today we are going to share a session that we had, a couple of us, and we feel that the session was uh, quite quite important for people to hear, so we are going to share it, and uh, we are going also to discuss around it, so the people who are here can, you know, pause it and discuss anytime. Uh, this is about, the topic is about contact, and, um, all right, Kim, uh, this is about contact mm -hmm. and about the contracts that has been made and how we can, you know, how we can deal with the governments and how we should relate to that and what we can do here. And it's not only about the global contact. Uh, it's about our personal isolated first contact and how we can make that happen. So there's a lot of nice, nice infos, and um, I know that uh, the the discussions will be great, and I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's opinion. And I have been, uh, you know, we are going to skip ahead a bit, and we're going to dive right into it. But in the beginning, the part where what you have missed so far is if uh, Safira can help me a little bit it's they talked about um, that there has been made a contract and uh, that the government don't want to you know interact with them and they are not trusting them because yeah and um, yeah help me out Safira well yeah, they didn't want them to use their technology against us, and uh, there are not not all the entities wanting to interact with humans have good intentions. But uh, he also said that because our governments don't have good intentions themselves, many times they're kind of looking at it more from a more suspicious uh, point of view. So I didn't understand how, when, and how exactly it came to be that they made these contracts and. Uh, Nitra said that Kennedy was killed because he was um, going to reveal these contracts with um, some of the, I don't know, your Yells or Grays, or I don't know who made the first contracts with whom, but that's what I understand so far. And so they're not allowed to tell us anything about our governments, they're not allowed to directly interfere with our lives or give us too much information. Um, in my yeah. opinion, they are, in, they are interacting with our lives, which changes our lives, but I, so I don't know exactly what they mean by interact with us. That would need to be clarified. May I um, clarify a little bit more? Of course, yeah. This is about the contract created about five to six years ago with our governments. Oh, okay. And the alien beings who wish to help us. Uh, Gert Bickner the ones that, you know, the human colonies, the colonies up in space, the colonies that we interact with the aliens, they've made a contract with our government. And that is the contract being spoken about at this moment. The, yeah. the idea in contact believe something suspicious may happen. They are suspicious of everything because they are not very forthcoming with themselves. Therefore, they cannot trust any outside communities and entities because they lie amongst themselves. I, I, I believe like that we, as our 
community in a sense. We do not have a contract that allows them to make a contract for us in a sense. Yes, this is the this we, is what we the are conversation our, is about. We are we have created our own government in a sense now, with our economy in a sense here on Earth. However, there is a government in place, a corrupt government in place on this Earth at the moment, who basically can say we can have we cannot have first contact with the aliens up there, even though the aliens up there have met them on numerous occasions and spoken to them on numerous occasions, they have no trust for them. Yeah. What about people like, there are some people that actually have been up into the ships physically, um, people like, um, what's the name? Yes, and we have most famous being um, Billy Meyer, who actually took pictures of himself being on the craft, and who actually yes, but that uh, was some time ago. Billy Myers, I believe, that's the guy who's had contacts in the seventies and on. From that point, we're talking about from six years ago to now. Well, I had a physical experience with an extraterrestrial, so. I don't. I think the contract only applies to Gerfik Mir because if it did, I wouldn't have had that experience. I understand that. That's the contract we're talking about. The contract with Gerfik Mir at the moment. Yes, exactly. So there is two points here. One point is that that was a long time ago, and different rules applied at that time. And uh, the second thing is that that's a different race than Gerfik Mir. Exactly. Who came to be the Myers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, but a lot of that will be answered in the session that I'm going to share. And I want to thank you for doing that recap for me, telling everyone what we have listened to so far. So the main point here is that we are talking about, yeah, you could say the contract. And the contract, the, the, the thing is, the phenomenon is that they have fourth dimensional weapons. The government, I'm talking about the government. They have fourth dimensional weapons that can shoot down our Gurfiknir ships. So, therefore, they are now, they need to negotiate with them. Yeah. Um, Hyun, did they say where they got those weapons from? Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. You will get a lot of answers as as the audio continues. Yes. Okay. All right. Instead of telling you everything, I will let the audio play. Yes, yes. And again, just you know, tell me to stop anything. All right. Boom. listening from outside, he's talking about the fact that when they come and teleport us in our third dimensional form, that that is a breach of the contract. positive and negative do abduct 
They have not been allowed to abduct. There are still some abductions being done, but if they are caught, the Galactic Council, Federation, whatever you may name it, has harsh penalties for these abductions. You do not hear much about abductions these days because they are rare. They are not permitted. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's right. But there is a positive, uh, you know, they take up, they pick up people in a positive yes. way. Still. They are not permitted. You yeah. see, Kirk McNear, as, a, as an alliance, has made this agreement with your governments. Other alliances have not made such agreement, agreements with your governments, and the governments will retaliate if they catch them. I just, I just find it interesting that why do they care now whether we go or not? It is a very sensitive time in your history, and they know this. It is giving time for your world to economy to collapse. They are on the verge of self-destruction, and they do not want any help from the outside because they fear that we will hasten their self-destruction. They are trying to they are trying to pull themselves away from this precipice, but they cannot. Right. It's a delicate time in history. If this were 50 years ago, there would be no such agreements because they wouldn't care. But they, they do at this point believe that a takeover is very easy for any alien species. Alright, I, I, I don't agree with them. I can, I can see their point of view. Um, but by the same token, to me it seems, you know, that it's, that's infringing upon us because we are making a different decision than they are, and I understand that they are technically our government. Outside of off-world off politics, you are under their influence in many ways every day. We are not to influence you or change the way that you believe or feel. And you do have a right to come if you would like. But we are in a position where we cannot risk your lives. If they say that they will do a retaliation, you would be on the ship when they attacked it. <laughs> yeah. um, and, go ahead, Caroline. A big contract made as an alliance for Jessica Yells? No, it was with the Kirk Near Alliance. Oh, okay. Because we asked them if we could help. At first, there was no problem. But then there was many that were suspicious of our help, and actually... Yes? Uh, what if there are those among us who are willing to uh, take the risk in order to help humanity to become galactic? Well, you're not just risking yourself, you're risking all of the people that are in the ship and that's the problem. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Yeah, what, yeah. what about if they send a ship without only us? 
Say that again. If you send a ship, we only are seeing it. I don't understand. I don't understand. Without, you. without any extraterrestrial being in it. On that no, ship. The whole point is that if they were to take us to the ship physically, they would try to shoot the ship down. Is that not the point? Yeah, but we, you talked about not risking the ET's life if they have a ship without only us in it, not an extraterrestrial being. So they can have an a, a even target to shoot down with all of us in it. That doesn't make any sense. Don't give them any ideas. Exactly. Uh -huh. So perhaps, well, per, perhaps the solution is that we find a way for ourselves to travel to the colony without their help at all. They cannot do anything, but we go there physical by ourselves. There's only one way to do that. Dave. We don't, and I think we're too low of a density to do that. No, what, what we actually need to do is unite. We need to stop viewing the aliens as being above us, being upon us. We need to escalate our vibration. They need to de-escalate theirs. We unite in everything they've taught us about ascension, manifestation, creation. I agree. So we become one collective. The aliens and the humans, we have this massive desire amongst all of us. We can shift this ourselves. There needs to be no violence. No individual person taking any risks. I mean, we have overthrown governments in our history before now. No, don't go but there because they're going to use that. <laughs> yeah, but they they're going to use that. Go. Don't go there. We've had to do it bearing arms. This time, our armory is our ability to manifest. True, which would give As them more reason to come after us personally. I disagree there, Sarah, only because they can't get us all. They can't get us all. They can't get all the aliens. And there is, there is a really <sighs> defining point here. The aliens of Gurkvik Mir are very pure. They are of of the deepest integrity. You know, there's no need for them to even sign a contract. Their word is good, okay? Well, we know they're that. They're, they're like a child. The analogy they have shown me is a newborn baby. And then you give and you give and you give and you give of yourself love to this baby consistently over and over and over and then suddenly one day that baby turns around and puts its arms around your neck and it's a moment you will never forget. Mm -hmm. That unity is something that needs to happen between us and our alien friends. If we create that, we unite together, we become a collective, we create the ability via our individual thought. And, you know, there's even distinction about the manifestation of this. But we can do it. We can mm -hmm. unite in this analogy of the child with the parent. It's time for us to turn and hug them back. We need to all become one. That's the power here. Mm-hmm. Amazing, Kim. I'd like to acknowledge that there are thank you. right now. We, we need to thank Almatok for this. Bless his heart. He channeled this to me. I had 24 hours. Bang. I've written heaps. There's more to come, guys. This isn't the end. There's a lot more information that's going to come to me and maybe others over the next few weeks. But this is the beginning and this is what we must embrace right now. And we can start doing it right now. We need to organise times. You know, they have to think about our time frames where we can collectively meditate on this with the aliens. Mm. That's a massive amount of energy. You know, there's there's one ship have, I'm aware of that has eight thousand beings on it that are here simply for their ability to generate energy. 
if we unite with just that one ship, can you imagine what we can do? Yes. So please yes, consider that. What we are doing here, and uh, you know, this 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 is why I have ascended so much yeah. because of this group and this connection that that we have been making, and the connection with them. And I think also this discussion that we are going to have today and the discussions to come. In the skies, you know, they, all they are is off planet. They're the same. We have the same vibration. We can be as powerful as each other. But we just have to stop that division, that hierarchy belief. They're well, willing. we are here. The, the reason why we're here is because we're creating a collective consciousness as it is. This is why we talk to each other. Yes. Exactly. That is already happening. Yep. Totally. Of our own, without even us thinking about it, it's happening. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes, I agree with the fact that we need to unite with them energetically. Uh, we're doing what we can at the moment. We're, we have gone so far in this last year. Do you understand? <laughs> Just imagine. Yeah, well, I, I know you guys haven't heard the entire recording yet. I have. There is a miracle that is referred to. Oh, okay. um, Distu has met, mentioned it and Alvin Tok has also, also mentioned it to me. If we had this time, and this has been attempted many times in our history, unsuccessfully, mm -hmm. if we can achieve this, this is what I believe to be the miracle that this do refers to. When you, when you hear it, just think about that, please. Just try to get it in your hearts. I will share more of what I have chat written with everybody um, as soon as I can. And there is a lot more to come. Um, and I'm so sorry, I need to go. <laughs> I know the time was really bad. Um, but it's only 6 a.m. and I got engaged about 12 hours ago. <laughs> so I need to go and spend so some time beautiful. with my fiance. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are eager to yes. hear about the channeling that you had. And congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I love you all. And I will be back with Alma Talk. <laughs> love you both. Bye-bye. Wonderful. Bye. So I want to bring, back, bring us back to the subject and I want to do that. I have a question. Uh, yes, yes. And I want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to just answer one thing to Gabriel first. And okay. I that if, if, if they would take us in a ship, Eventually, that ship would go into a Gurk Fekneer ship. So it doesn't matter if we go to a ship. What we, what would we do there? If, uh, you know, what's the point of going? We could meet up here. So, uh, so, and also the fact that we shouldn't be shot at. <laughs> There's no need for that. So we need to figure out how we can do that without that happening. Exactly. Okay, may I ask my question? Because I've been waiting. Yes, um, yes go ahead. Nitro. Nitro, it's right before you. Just give me one second. Thank you. Uh, so, what I don't understand, and you can tell me, Hayan or Sabrina, if you already asked this question, I will wait for the recording. Yeah. But in the very beginning, when I first joined Nucleo about a year, over a year ago, um, you know, we were told that we would be interviewed and then taken physically to the colonies first of all. Yes. And then when they started when they started talking to us about the technology to transport us and everything, I mean, why did they even bring up the subject with us if they that, knew that, that we could? Come. That will come. 
Okay. That's my that would be my question right now. Yeah. Okay, I'll wait. I had a message. Uh something about do not rely on your governments to tell you or permit you when to go. Uh you have the uh, you have the power S send them send your leaders love so their hearts can o open up do not rely on them to give permission do what is necessary for your ascension. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nitrous. All right, all right. Sean, welcome. You have anything to say? Uh, I'm just confused. Uh, what are we doing? Um, we had a session. We are going. We are sharing it now live and with you, and we are discussing about it as we go along. And the topic is about contact and first contact and individual first contact and the contract. So, yeah. So, so now I'm going to play an audio and share the session. Oh wait, I had one more thing. All right. Uh, well, if and when they do take us up and they try to shoot us down, Gervigmir could just move the ship somewhere else where they can't reach it. They can't. You will hear why. Yeah. Oh. I have a uh, question too. Uh, why don't they get a land of a fifth dimensional ship to bring us? <laughs> yeah, I thought that too. But as I said, we can <clears throat> we can go back to that discussion. Well, there may be a reason why they sh they wouldn't do a fifth dimensional ship because we're we're connecting to the fourth dimensional level. Fifth dimensional may be a little bit too high of an ener energetic. Uh, place for us to reach just now. Yeah. <clears throat> Indeed. <clears throat> right. Anything else? Uh, don't some of their ships have barriers or shields or something? Again, we will, uh, you will hear. I okay. know. We can come back to this. I'm going to play the recording. So we thought that we were changing the weather to make it more detrimental. Also that they could be the one causing that. Which is not true. Even though in every major storm or seismic or volcanic event, in every large event there was a sighting. That was us helping, not hurting. We were not... By the way, Sean, where if you were listening live, how was the audio coming? Through? Sorry, can you clarify more, please? Did you listen live? Yes. How was the audio? Good. Is it the same as it is here? Yes. Right. For me, audio is not as clear <laughs> as you all talking. Can you raise the volume a little bit more? The thing is, if I raise the volume, 
it becomes you know distorted. Okay, how were you thinking? Yeah, I will raise it a little bit. Causing the incidents, we were trying to save lives, and we have done so in many ways. Have you noticed that during many of these horrific events, that only a few lives have been lost? Yeah, and I actually saw propaganda last night about them saying the coincidence that there was always a ship around. So they were trying to imply that it was plus five, not that they yes. were helping. Yeah. However, in past storms many years ago, if a tornado would rip through a town, as you would say, it would kill many people. Now, only few incidents of death occur. Have you noticed this? Yeah. We are saving lives, not killing lives. And you're also helping with the axis, aren't you? Is that right? The axis is being held in place by us and other species that are helping to hold it in place. Some claim to be neutral because they do not interact with your society, but they do not want to see your society destroyed, so they will help us in giving us energy to keep the axis in place. This is not actually neutral, but their interaction with the world as you know it is otherwise non-existent. And um, the, the contract was it? What government was it made? Was it made but with every every government in the in the world, or certain? Or does it only apply to certain countries? Only applies to certain countries. Some are uninterested. Okay. The smaller the smaller countries do not care. The ones with power are the ones that are in the contract with us. United States, Russia, China, Japan, France, Germany, How about the Brazil, there are many, Israel, Sweden, I can name five or six more, Sweden, Sweden does not care. But what, what, how about the UK? Yes, the United Kingdom is involved. What about uh, besides Brazil and South America? Argentina and Colombia. Mm, yeah. Middle East. How about Many in the Middle East are not concerned, but Israel, Jordan, Egypt, Syria. Syria is not involved. Iran? Iran is not involved. China? China yes. is involved, yes. yes. Welcome back, Sarah. They are now talking about the countries which don't have that contract. So they were mentioning that they were all these big, the biggest countries in the world. And Sweden was not one of them. Does that mean Hayan can go? Yeah. Yes, that means you can go. <laughs> and I don't want to go. So and what do you mean you don't want to go? No, I want to, but I'm not focused on that right now. Oh, guys, I just missed that. What just happened? Only the smaller countries. Only the smaller countries don't have the contract with Gerg Vignier. That would make sense because they, they wouldn't be part of the UN. So anyone from the UN can wait, not any one of the smaller countries that are in contact can go. Yeah. So that's why there is a lot of activity at isolated islands and stuff like that. Uh huh. Um, Everybody's welcome to me. <laughs> yes, but we're still citizens of those other countries. I don't think it works that way. Oh, that's a good point. Um, 
they mentioned something about changing the contract. Um, from what I know, if you try to change a contract, that makes it null and void. And Takura mentioned about breaking it. Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. I they think they should. talk about it here, too. Here's the, here's the issue that I have. The very fact that they start to shoot, our governments decide to shoot on the ships, tell us a lot about our government. Well, there you go. They tell you the very fact that they're trying to kill us or them. That tells me that the governments are in a bit of fear. Oh, and more than a bit of fear. They, they, they're having a hard time justif justifying. I understand that they want to protect this planet, but if, if we are all here working together as one and trying to make everything more freer, meaning to, it's not like these the extraterrestrials want to just give us all this technology. It's not about that because then they're doing it for us. But in a way that can redistribute the wealth on the planet to help it to make it a win-win for everyone. It's not about taking over anybody. That's the fear that they have that they're coming down and taking over the planet. Maybe some do, but not all of them, not most of them. They're here Wait, because Brian. they're trying to uplift humanity. Wait, it's not Brian. about misconception. Wait, can I, can I stop you there? Uh, what makes you think the government is protecting us from them? So They are only protecting their own interests. They have no right. interest in protecting us. Thinking. So I... Governments really, really fear and are afraid of power I mean, being taken what, away from them. They fear but, this but power. What power. Power over us, because look there at our society, look at our society. They they allow our society to be poisoned, and they some of the wars that we have here are made by them. So they don't exactly care for us, but one must know. I don't know where this came from. But one must know the folly of a king of a fear. One must yeah. know. One must know the folly of a king without his kingdom. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've always, I just, I, I keep thinking if, if the governments truly care about the voters and their people, let the people decide. That's a misconception because let they don't care about the decide. voters or the people. Because they only care that they retain power. My, here it is. Some the, people, do. Some do. the ones that are in government right now, the ones that are aging and very up there in age, if those are listening right now, please understand that you guys, your time is running out. Your your time is running out because you allowed this, and we did too, we we're a part of this, but you cannot hold on for control forever. It's not working. The people, it's just, the people are going to rise up anyway. So why not work with us? Why not work yes. with the people that are trying to make a difference on the planet to better humanity, to bring yes. us, to, to make it a win-win situation? Instead yes. of us versus them, this competitiveness. The competitiveness is actually is help, helping in the self-destruction of this planet. But working together as a oneness will bring about change for everybody. It's not about, it shouldn't be about control anymore. It should be about working together, finding ways that really reach out. Put away your differences of this race issue of color. This is another thing. Being born with a silver spoon in your mouth, this stuff has to stop. Because it's not, it's a detrimental to society. You're not, they're not actually, it's not, it's, it's counterintuitive. It's, it's not working. Counterproductive. Right. It's not <laughs> helping anyone, even them at the top. You might be able to control for a long time, but yet the power is running out. It's slipping away. People are tired of it. We want change and we demand it. We're, we're yeah. here because we, but we love you for, we're putting you in power. We voted you in office. You have your, your, your power. But yet, guys, it's not going to help in the long run. You're destroying your generations, the people, your children. It's 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 going to come to an end. We're on a self-destructive path, humanity. And the only way to change it is starting to work together. We need each other. And it's Rich really and free bond. It doesn't matter. We're here for each other, and that's what it was. Being. That was the whole point was to bring oneness, and also to bring the balance to the planet. Well, Not to destroy it. You all that are hearing, that you hear me now, these governments that are rich, 
you also realize you are live on this planet also. Now we don't know all the species like you do. We don't know all a lot of these names m many of you know in the governments that have access to these classified stuff. But yet you are a part of it. You can be free. You can share this information with many. Help us. Help us understand where you're coming from, where your fears and your doubts are. Help us understand why you're so afraid of these other extraterrestrials. Maybe there are things that we don't understand that you know about. But share with us. Help us understand this so we can better appreciate why you're defending this planet so much, so strongly, so heavily. Why is it you truly fear about them? That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely, Brian. And there, and there are also part of them, them that really blindly believe that they are protecting us in, from, from the negative reptilians, uh, from the negative aliens, as they think that... that uh, but but I do where. agree with Kim. It shouldn't be about us versus them anymore. It's really about, show us, show us, tell us your fears. Talk to us. Join the hangouts. Don't be afraid. Tell us, why are you so in this stronghold of control? Is it really to protect the planet, or is there something greater that we don't understand? What is it? What drives you? What, what, why, I, I, I mean, if I, if beings were coming down and if I had, if I was rulership of the planet, yes, I would be concerned, but. I would really like to build relationships with them to understand how we can benefit each other, off-world and on-world. You see? Beautiful. And I would like to say to members of the people in power, not every one of them is bad. Some, those of you that have realized that this is wrong, not helpful, but are afraid to come out, we would encourage you to come out and tell us everything that you know to help this planet. Don't be afraid to speak out, those that are afraid to speak out and have awoken. We, we invite you uh, here with us. We also invite those who haven't awoken or awaken. We would like to understand your perspective on why you choose to hinder progress or you believe that what you're doing is progressive. We would like to understand that and have a real conversation finally. Some are lost. I just got that. Some are lost. Some are aware that some are aware that destruction causes destruction and they like that. I just got that. Well, I understand that that's what makes them happy, but they are a small part of this earth at the moment. They are less than the 1%. That means you have 99.99 some odd percent of people out there who don't have that understanding of destruction being fun. <laughs> and so since we all have to live here on this earth together, which we have all chosen to do so, we should come to some sort of agreement or understanding of each other instead of one group hip hip in a ray and over here saying this is fun destroy 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 this is not what this planet is for this planet is for creation not destruction so if you choose to play the game of destruction there are many other planets out there where you know you you've carried that out Maybe Let's create for both sides. And death, 
death is not destruction. Death is a new chapter for a new life. Now that doesn't mean that killing is right. If you murder people, that, that's obviously not a way of progression. If you do it and you enjoy it, that's not a way of progression. That's no, actually self-destruction. Yes, we can continue, Sabrina. All right, all right. Thank you very much. So if we were to go to one of the countries that don't care, could we go? It is possible to go if, because they would not know that you are going. However, they do intercept all transmissions from our ship. That is part of the treaty. Um, okay. So we're to assume that they're also listening to our conversation. This is true. But they are not always interested in what we have to say. But this transmission may be important to them. Yes. I can speak freely about the treaty because they want you to know about it. Yeah, and we want to find some holes in it as well. They will not let you find any holes at this time because if they find them, they will amend them. Mm. But now it has to be an agreement to both parties. Let me tell you what is happening now because it is a very important step for us. We are considering breaking the agreement. The reason why we, are, we would leave your space. Because we cannot put up with some of the things that they are imposing on us. It is getting worse every month. Your time. So, can you give us an example of the recent changes they have wanted to do? Well, one was the transporting of people from the earth to the ship. How can we impact your progress in the ascension in this way if we cannot actually have you remember the incidents? actually train you in a third dimensional way. This becomes counterproductive for us. We also see that they have many different weapons focused on us, and this is a threat to us 24 hours as your day goes. Because even if one is accidentally fired, it would cause many to die. We are feeling a greater strain with especially the Russian government and the United States governments to push us away because there is a thought that we could be preparing people to attack their own governments. But we do not do that, and they know that is true. But they do not know what we do on the colonies when they cannot see us. They are suspicious. They believe that we are brainwashing you, but we are not. Oh, oh, it's just... Your planet, your weather will be worse. 
listening to us, I have this message to say to them. Um, by having perfect near leave, you don't just <laughs> harm us, you harm your families and your children and everybody with you. So I don't see the benefit of you holding on to a government that obviously is not working. You can no longer sustain it because it's too top heavy. So I, I think you need to reconsider why you're choosing to do what you're doing. Because in the end, you will not benefit um, because you can no longer it can no longer be sustained um, by having help. Um, our children will survive and they would see a different world. It might not be what you desire, but it will be something better for them. And I also want to add um, that um, you should trust at least somebody, some alliance or somebody like that. Um, and I think that they're, you know, they've been good to us, they've been very good to us. And um, you know, the saying is the the devil you know than the devil you don't and there are other alien species coming to this planet all the time. So exactly. you know, and this is another one of their fears. Yeah. There are too many species around. They do not trust that. They would rather break ties with everyone and defend themselves. They they have the alliance of some insectoids and reptilians and some other species that are not actually terms with them, but they trust them more than us because they're more like them, barbaric in some ways. I understand what you are saying, but, but the more aliens that come, the more restrictions we have. But how can they trust the those races that they work with? Because they've given them technology. They've given them the ability to blow us out of the sky, fourth dimensional objects. They've given them the... Yes. But they, in a sense, the government... Uh, when put, put, like, negativity to themselves. They put destruction to themselves, in a sense. The way yes. They, what Sabrina said was beautiful. And I have another comment. If they are so willing to trust the reptilians and the insectoids because they are more third dimensional or survival based because they're giving technology, that giving up technology does not mean that you can trust someone. Also, if they wish to speak to a race that is already third dimensional, shouldn't they be talking to us humans? And not the aliens. I think they want people that are more advanced and people that can help their self-interest. Earth people can't do that because, you know... That's what they believe. Yeah. Because they're the ones But that's who are, not the truth. Yeah. What did you mean by them talking to aliens instead of talking to third dimensional humans? They wish to talk to the reptilians and the, the insectoids because they give them technology and they believe they can trust them more because they are more survival based. Are the government? Yes, our government. Yeah. So why shouldn't they be talking to humans instead? I guess it's because humans can't fulfill their greed, and we, yeah. I guess they can't fit their egoistic and greediness. Yes, you just brought up a good point, Sarah, about the, uh, you know, about the trusting. About yes, they give them the weapons because they're the governments are based in fear. It is pure and simple. It's a fear based about, you know, how to survive. They're in survival mode. They're not in about loving themselves. It really comes back to self-love. They're more afraid of something or someone coming to take their power or take them away or take us away from them 
it, it's just survival. It's an old energy. But here's the thing. Gertrude Near is actually providing something that is for their survival, the help with the weather. I think the weather is basically for the people, not for the government. Well, they yeah. still but, the but, still live in the places where they're being affected, and still yeah. they're, they're still helping everyone. It's a win-win. Yeah. It and is the, a win-win. And, and, and the government also have children themselves, and they need to protect exactly. the children. Their generations. So, exactly. So then they create earthquake and stuff like that, and destroy vacation areas. So where are they going to take their vacation with all the money they have? Uh, there's, there are <laughs> parts destroyed. of the government. There are parts of the government called the shadow government. I'm sure you've all heard of that. They want three quarters of the Earth population to be destroyed. So actually, if Rick Fickner is helping us survive, there are parts of the government that are not happy with that. So actually, the weather would be a good way to get a lot of humans killed. Uh, really, the bad weather. So they're actually counterproductive in what some of uh, the shadow government wants. So that they're using the excuse that they are actually causing the weather to be bad, and that's why they're kind of complaining. And Rick Fignier is saying, no, no, we're actually helping you survive by helping you with the weather. But, um, yeah, we're not really, three quarters of us are not really meant to survive. There's a lot of, uh, as I think Nitrous mentioned that before, there's a lot of our foods which have, you know, poisonous chemicals. There's the whole Monsanto and the GMO thing, and there's all kinds of things going on where, where sicknesses are created so that we spend all of our money curing them. I mean, it's all just a big scam. And I, I don't know if the governments are fear-based as much as power-based, but fear and power, I suppose, go together. Because if you're afraid, you want to grab for more power. So mm -hmm. um, that's basically what's going on. We, we're supposed to die. <laughs> which direction we're going as a society. You know, mm -hmm. do we do we want to keep going down that self-destructive path or do we want something? Gripfuck near represents freedom and balance. Freedom and balance. It's the whole thing was about why we called them here. We asked them to be here at this mm -hmm. time. Many of us have representatives in their societies in Gripfuck near. Yeah. We've asked them to come. And the reason why we we're asking, and it's a collective thing, it wasn't just one individual, it was many. Mm -hmm. We've asked them to come here at this crucial time because our governments have turned and they're not willing to work for the people by the people. That's right. Why they were elected in the first place. They decided to take the power and the greed to the, onto themselves and into the fear and the survival. That yes, there's many religions that are wrapped up in this also. One world governments, one world religions. I understand these things. They're waiting for the great day, the sign of Jesus' return. My friends, I know who you are. I, I understand these things, but please believe me. It's all a part of universal galactic command. It's about bringing people together. We're not looking for a savior here. It's not about that. It's really about working together as a oneness. We're not here to give our power away to one God. It's about working together and finding the God within. Not somewhere out there. It's about the power within us, each individual. And we will help each other out. It's about helping yeah. and sharing each other. That's yeah, what it was all okay. about. You, we, we don't want you to take, over, take away your power. We want your power to be We're not to here to take away the government's power. We're not here being brainwashed. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's mm -hmm. about working together for a better planet, a cleaner planet. We're not talking about all of a sudden free energy because that would disrupt the, the, the government. Well, it would disrupt everything. We're talking about slowly introducing these devices that will help benefit even you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Not just us. Everyone would benefit. And then we can all benefit and we'll all feel more freer. And we can all expand into other whatever we want to do. It should be a free choice. What is the American dream? Just take the United States for an example. The American dream. I hear this in the commercials all the time. 
You live, made the American dream. What is the American dream? How about let's go beyond that. Let's start to see what is the world, what is the galactic dream? What is a universal dream? Mm -hmm. let's, let's get beyond these borders, these barriers and these borders. Let's put aside these differences. What does it mean to be galactic? You see? Yeah. What does it mean to be a galactic citizen, as Bashar once said? And it's not just going into space. Right. Exactly. Embodiment, being here on the planet, enjoying this stuff, going through this, the survival in a way, but it doesn't have to be about survival. It, it's really, it should be about a win-win for everybody. You're still going to have your sports and your competitions. I understand that. When it's embedded us in us since birth. But yet, we need to learn to appreciate ourselves. God, what are we doing to the planet? We don't need this. We're better than this. That's right. Um, Sean, to answer your question, it ain't over until the fat lady sings. <laughs> So yes, uh, I, I, I welcome Grip McNear and to those beings that try to bring the balance because if we let one side that's wrapped up in survival take command, it's never going to – it's just the population gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's not, it shouldn't be about that. It should be about how can we work together. Well, this is we're why we're here gonna, with the bridge. Extraterrestrial differences. There are always going to be differences. Always. Always. But yet, we can work through those differences. Brian. Together, yes. This is why we're here. This is why we decided to incarnate at this time. Yes. We are here to be the bridge. So uh, I invite those reptilian energies and those insectoid energies that are working with our governments, please, my friends, see what you're really doing to the planet. Also, work with us. We work want with to, the group with Nier. We no, we want to help everyone in a sense. We don't want. We to want to work with that. everyone. Not put one against another. It's not about that. It's about cooperation over competition. Mm -hmm. That would make a great bumper sticker, wouldn't it? Cooperation over competition. Very nice. And for example, if you love the idea of killing someone, we can change it to some more positive. Yeah, if you guys like war. More amazing that, that, than that for you. If, you. if you guys like so war, those who are, are so bent on war, then play some video games. <laughs> <laughs> play some video games. Those are more war-like. But for the people in the humanity who's trying to really make it in life, they deserve the best. We put you guys in power. We vote, we're you, we vote you in power, then help us. We're Work ready to us. move on. I think yes. as a as 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 a race, we're maybe, we're ready to move on. We've done all of that. We've done, you know, played this game and that game and this game, and and we're done. And I think they need to realize. Um, when the game is over and as a collective we have already decided that we want something else yes uh, and, 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 they, and they choose in the strategy that they are going to lose the moving the pieces that they are going to lose we don't want them to lose we want them to succeed right but it's, it's, it's not they, about if they continue choosing to Put out uh, losing pieces if they know that they are losing in a sense, but they're right. still afraid. Right, because they're afraid. They're afraid of losing their power. But they know they eventually going to do that in a sense. Right, and oh. and and they're afraid. They're afraid, but I, but Sean. Um, As a group, we can 
change that. And as we continue to listen to the uh, audio, did they say that they are considering leaving like us? Well, if they leave the space. I don't know. If, I don't know if we can continue going to their ships. Probably. The curse. But if they leave the space, then our weather's going to get really crazy, and well, we don't. We we can't afford that. Well, there's still the Federation. The curse said that they will consider leaving us. It was yes. in the audio. They will consider yeah. leaving us what? It was it was in the audio of the channel. Yeah. Yes, but I think I think we can change things as a group. Come on. Each one of us has entities with them and spirits with them and dead family members with them. <laughs> so I think we can all call upon everybody and then of course we have the ascended masters and the angels and the angels so I think we can do this I really think we can I really think we can change the course of what's happening here that we can in fact have the contract change so there's no weapons pointing at them where they have a bit more freedom to help us yeah, so yeah. This is where we have to basically uh, <clears throat> do what we preach, and uh, and and this uh, is where we're gonna put our heads together, and we're gonna come up with the plan, and we're gonna meditate on it, and we're gonna call upon everybody that we could possibly think of to help us change the course of this, because I think that um, I think we can do it. I really do think we can do it. I think we're fully capable of changing this so that Wait. you don't have to feel threatened at all times and and we can still continue our growth and continue our ascension and they can continue helping us with the weather. I would like to add something to this uh, line of thought which is very beautiful is that um, we create our governments so and in the in the concept of oneness, uh, our governments are us and we are them. So, any kind of fear or deceitfulness or secrecy or dishonesty, uh, if we rid those things within ourselves quickly, then we also affect how the government is reacting to these things. We are not separate from them. In other words, even though and Roxy uh, gave a. A uh, channeling not so long ago, I think it was posted on Google Plus, uh, about a similar concept that we need to have actually compassion and love for those uh, government and for the governments that will be exposed very soon, and the feeling will be to take revenge on them. But the point is for us light workers not to take revenge, but to have compassion and surround them with love and light. So part of uniting, just what you were saying, Sabrina, part of uniting and you know, ch um, changing how this end result is going to come out with Good Fick Near, uh, it will also change the way the government can see things if we can get it all together in that point as as a together, <laughs> as together, being together, doing it together, ridding all these things that we are, that we think the government is doing to us, we actually do it to each other all the time. You think of going into a small um, gas station and they're charging four dollars more for something you get for a dollar or uh, you go on Craigslist or advertisements or everything is just a falsehood and we are kind of perpetuating that ourselves unbeknownst perhaps or usually we think we're not but somehow we are so to examine you know where we ourselves are doing the same things that is being done to us and where our fear is and you know I can I can control I can be very controlling and using power to control my life because I'm afraid of being hurt on a very very small scale just as the government is doing it on a larger scale so I just want to add that to the whole collective idea as well yeah thank you thank you yeah thank you and as we change we we see that reflection so there is that yeah. too. and one thing to I, I thought that helps me think of us as uh, one 
and, and not to hate on the government is, um, is the analogy of the caterpillar. Uh, so I will read it again because I, I think it fits right here, exactly here on the, this line of thought. It's like their last effort, their um, last effort of a particular phase of a civilization. So we'd say last gasp. The caterpillar becomes the butterfly. The caterpillar is very destructive and it eats 300 times its own body weight a day, each day. And it becomes at, at some point so bloated, so heavy that it hangs upside down to start to shed its skin. It does that by creating an imaginat imaginative self and crystallizing that imaginative self pushes away the old skin and out comes the what, what is going to become the butterfly. So the point here is that the old government and the new government which we are going to become, create through our indigo children and you know with, with a whole generation that is enlightened, they are going to coexist and they are just doing their, their job. And, and as someone said, you know, we have, we have, um, we have counterparts in, in the galactic, you know, the ones who are around here, but we also have counterparts in, in, uh, you know, in, in uh, negative lives as well. We have done that as well. So we are all doing it as, as one in a symphony. All right. Well done, Haya. Bombo Cloud. So, this is uh, a very great discussion. Uh, I would also like to hear some of the people that haven't spoken yet so much. I really encourage you to speak, and I know everybody wants to speak, uh, but, uh, but yeah. But I'm going to play it now. Transporting on their own, so they could transport to us if they would like. They have been given other kinds of medications and things of that have been given them technology. They've given them the ability to blow us out of the sky, fourth dimensional objects. They've given them the ability to learn transporting on their own so they could transport to us if they would like. They have been given other kinds of medications and things of that nature that could heal a multitude of things on your planet, but they will not release them, of course. Yeah. But they will use them for their own personal use. This is also, by the way, uh, you know the crop circle of a alien picture? and then there is a circle next to it with a message. The message uh, says, uh, the bringers of gifts, beware of them, and stuff like that. Uh, but still there is m much time left to do things. Uh, that, that is them, the reptilians. And this is uh, what they are speaking about now, that they are the ones who gave them technologies. And I know that we have, you know, speculated and heard it from here and there, but uh, I actually got that in a session. So it was uh, it was good to know, black and white, now I know for sure. 
that uh, it was the reptilians and the insectoids and the greys, you know, the were they they were speaking about. So, so is Gertfrednir considering leaving? We do not want to. At the next meeting of our council, or the treaty talks, will be on February 28th. And that's one of the things that will be discussed. That is one of the things that we will discuss with them because I will be the representative along with Pentim and Yusel. The three of us will be on Earth that day to be in the council of your different countries. So you actually come down here for for the council. There is no there is no other way. Yeah, it's, it's it's we obviously need the help. Um, there's a pulse storm coming through, and yes, I, I can see it and. And I don't see how they are ever be capable of controlling any of these things that are happening with the weather. So Boston should have received 127 inches of snow. It only received 80. Yeah. The cold. We are not. We are not prepared to do anything with this cold weather. We were, it will not kill many, so we cannot touch it at this point. The extreme cold will just come through and leave. If it had snow, we would help with that, but we cannot help with extreme cold. Mm. We can only possibly make it worse, and we do not want to do that. We are letting that one go by on its own. Yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely see that. Yeah. If it were something more dangerous than just cold, we would interfere. But at this point, we do not see a, a point in interfering with just extreme cold. This is going to go out in some place. It would go out whether we controlled it. 15 degrees or not. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, in terms of... Is there... It, did, did they ask for anything specific to say if if you give us this, we will, we will see you as being trustworthy? Did they, did they ask for anything of that sort? Yes. They asked for technology for different things, but were denied because they cannot handle it properly. Yeah. It would destroy your planet in no time at all. Yeah, no, not a good idea. Because, I mean, the contract's like, uh, a contract to me, anyway, it's just like doing a deal with the devil, you know, they are. It's, we feel it is a deal with negative energies, yes, but a necessary evil at this point because to save human lives and to help ascension, we feel we must be involved. However, if things continue on this path, we will be forced to pull away. Yeah, because I, I think I think one thing that 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 needs to be they, they need to realize that um, anybody that's going to work for near to begin with. Um, we we are not easily um, swayed into propaganda. So it wasn't like you were changing us. We we were never part of the group to begin with. I so, yeah. So we we are. We think we're on our own, we like to think we're on our own, we like to make our own decisions. And... That is because 
because you are enlightened. You have the knowledge that we exist, and you believe that we are not harmful, which we are not, or we can be, but we are not. Our only Or to bring your ascension to a greater and more quick, a quicker end. Yeah. Is there some? Have, do all of you have the same agenda, or is it some of you that has you know sub categories maybe of of your group? That, uh, what subcategory, what would you be exampling of that? Like a small portion of you maybe, uh, maybe are more put scientifically interested. Yes, that is true. There is a portion that gives no care for the human population as a whole. Yeah. But are interested in the science and interested in the things that they can learn from humanity. However, let me give you an example of changes that have been made on the ship. Take Jakar for an example. When, when first contacting Max through Jim, Jakar did not speak. Jakar did not speak for six months, but everyone was aware that she was here. The reason she did not speak was because she did not care about humanity at that time. She saw the big picture as destructive, hateful, warlike, hurting one another and not worthy of help. She was one of the people that did not want to help you at first. Then the telepaths came from your planet and she learned much about each individual that came and she learned that humans were worth saving. This is these two. One of the major ones in the ship. Thank you. intentions but before she thought that about us what were her thinking about us um, what were her reason for being around the planet was it scientifically or yes she was part of the program to help the weather and also she was what you would call an executive secretary she was inputting all the information that was gathered in all different areas so that it could be easily recalled. She was an information specialist and a weather specialist as well, but she did not really care about humanity at that time. But her thoughts were that you were warlike and that you would hurt each other and that why were we trying to save a planet that was ultimately going to destroy themselves anyway. But she cared about the planet. But now she learned about the people and she is taking a very interesting turn because now she does not look at the planet as a whole anymore. She sees different individuals and how they are moving forward in the ascension and their love and their caring 
for one another and how they are moving forward, and she has become gripped by your emotional stance for one another and involved with you individually, but not as a race or a planet, but as individuals is where she is interested. Okay, thank you. You understand that? Yes, I, I get it because I sometimes I, I become exasperated with the way we are towards each other. Um, yeah, because I at times I have difficulties with it also. Yes, she sees that you have difficulties, and this is another endearing fact that she has come across is that she realizes some of you know the difference between good and bad, or positive and negative, ascension and not. She is well pleased to know you. She has much love for these people in your human colony. Well, we, we, we love her. Yeah. Just one, one quickie about the contract. Where And when you help with the weather and stuff, uh, do you actually come down to the planet? No, we do not. You only work from outside? We work from above, yes. Okay. There is space for us to work from above with different energetic beams that can help with the tectonic plates, moving them so that they would wedge together instead of shake apart and with some that helps with also with volcanic eruptions with tectonic plates that are melting or falling apart we can move some slightly so that in a way that does not cause earth to shake let me ask you something um can we do anything as a group to try and uh, get them to see the light, get them to see uh, the benefit of what is happening here. I believe what you did earlier, speaking directly to them as an individual, will be helpful to some degree because they have lost touch with what it is like to be a citizen in normal time on your planet. They are privileged, they are wealthy, and they are powerful. Yeah, the, the thing is that uh, none of that will help with the weather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, we will help as long as we can. I know, I know, but... But, but if they are causing weather, this could be a problem. Some will believe it. But you know, not all will. But not all are enlightened. And not all trust aliens. And not all will see the same things the way you do. We are in great danger here. Yes, I, I can see that. I do have to say, though, that I am seeing a lot, a lot, a lot more people waking up. That is um, the the the, uh, the YouTube, which is where we watch videos of different people. It's so many people channeling, so many so many people speaking languages, so many people um, speaking of light and love. Um, so uh, yeah, I am I can see you know progress is being made. Um, what about in terms? of contact. What about it? <clears throat> um, what exactly, because 
it seemed like before we were talking about it a little bit closer in time. Um, now, now, now things in your Middle East are volatile. Things in your Russian area are volatile. Wars are very close now. Where they were not close before, they are much closer now than ever before. And they are going to be violent. And your, your governments do not want to have to deal with these wars and aliens at the same time. Yes, contact will happen. But right now we must get them to understand that they must control their politicians. Right. Because the, the other thing that, that seems to be that the people are seeing ships everywhere. Yes. Um so I don't I don't see how they can control that any longer. Um, we are no longer shy about showing our ships at times when it is necessary. That's why you see us during events such as heavy snowstorms or volcanoes or earthquakes or whatever it may be, if we have to show ourselves to get closer to the problem, we will. Um, Paya, do you have any more questions? Yeah. Um, you, we, we remember, we rem remember that you have taken people physically to the colonies before. Yes. And wh how come we, you could do that before? We usually came to the planet and picked them up. They were in usually exposed areas. Either that or we would send someone for them to bring them. Transporting them was dangerous. We did do it. We did interdimensional movement with them, not transporting. And many times we came to the planet and landed and picked up people. Yeah. But transporting site to site was not part of what we did. So that's the difference. You have been working on the site to site transfer, but before you came down and you beamed up people. It was dangerous for us to do so. Our transporters were not calibrated for human transfer. It would have ruined the whole project for the body to be mangled. And is there still um, some requ requirement in the vibration level? Not any longer. What we have done is, as you know, your technology moves forward very quickly, as does ours. So we have recalibrated all the, actually rebuilt from scratch, our transporter technology now to be suitable for more than one species. Mm. Okay. So now vibration isn't, isn't an issue Not before. Longer. It used to be important because we moved you interdimensionally. Mm. Interdimensional travel does depend on vibration still, but transfer site to site does not. Okay. Um, All right. Okay. If you have something um, on the same topic.
that has been considered. At this point, it would seem devious of us to do so. Well, um, the government's devious, I don't know. Okay. Yes, but we do not want to share that level of devious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just trying to come up with some ideas. And, you know, I understand. Yeah, and I it's appreciated that you are on my side, our yes. side, and are willing to come and learn things to help your species. But our hands are tied to some degree. Using your own terminologies. Yes. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, it, the only other possibility is it's, it's if we happen to go or be in a country where um, in a group for the training. You seem amused. It's so, just more frustration, I think. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. It's crazy. It really is. Yes. I can understand that humans sometimes smile and laugh when they are frustrated because there is no way around what they feel is impossible and so that is their only way yeah. to deal with it. Yeah, because I can tell you that see part of part of the frustration that we feel is that um, we thought that what we were doing was that the government didn't have control over. So now we find out that they have control over us. So it's it sort of feels like uh, like a great cloud to me because you know that's precisely what we're trying to get away from. We just don't want anything to do with that. I mean, they can do their own thing and choose to do whatever they wish, but we want something else. We want something better. We want to give our children something else and we want to give the future of this planet something else where there is hope and where there is more equality and and where we can understand each other better and not treat each other so badly. And I am glad that we have spoken to me tonight. To me tonight. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> It will give me something to say to them when we have our conference. Mm -hmm. I will be able to tell them that I directly know how you feel, how many of you feel. Yeah. It would seem that you feel the same about these things. It is appreciated that we have your support, and perhaps this will help sway them because if we have your support, perhaps they will understand that they will be doing themselves a favor to understand why you support us. Yeah. I mean, it makes you almost want to not be on this planet. You know, obviously they've got control, fair enough. But, you know, have control of individual people, you know, it's fine. I think perhaps that is one of their fears that we will start taking you away in mass amounts and not returning you. Well, some of us wouldn't mind that if they are. Really? Who wants to live in the world with governments like that? Seriously. I understand. Protect us, you know, to a certain degree, fair enough. But completely, utterly, you know, take away our free will. That's what you Enjoy the environments that we could supply. Yeah, we have many and various beautiful environments. We have seen many planets with beautiful environments that you would be able to go to. But this is not something we should discuss at this time. Yeah. So who, who sent who sent Gert Vanier over here to to um, It was our idea. We had decided the Arcturians were the major influence. Okay. As you know, they are a very peace loving species and they want to maintain 
maintain this population that you are part of, and we share with their ideas about this. And so our alliance had decided that we would help. But it was started by Octorian Council. Do you work with other alliances? Yes. We do have allies. That does not mean that they are part of us, because some of their ideas are different. But we do have some same likeness in ideas, and there we have an alliance and we'll help each other and you whenever necessary. And and uh, you would work with uh, like-minded alliances. So exactly. So it would be only alliances that also want uh, our ascension to go up. Correct. Or maybe they want to save the earth. Some of their agendas are the same as ours. Some are different. Some are in alliance with us because they want the earth to continue and perpetuate and rise. Others are with us in thought because we are helping to just be a first contact. Some are with us because they are interested in the Earth as a scientific project, mm. which we are also in alliance with them as a scientific project also, but we want to save the population and have it ascend as we are studying it and its do, makeup. Do you, do you have someone to answer to uh, in terms of um, like who's making the calls? Uh, the Arthurian Council also always makes the calls. We are part of the alliance of Arctic Near, the five different species, but the Arcturians have the final word because they are the fifth dimen close to fifth dimensional species, and they have a higher knowledge and understanding. However, we all have our input, and it is very fair. Yes. Galactic yeah. Assembly. What about the... Once the Galactic Assembly came through and they told us that they... I remember, help me guys, did they say that they, um, they make the decisions about what happens here? And who comes and who goes? The Galactic Federation. And seismic and things of that nature. Okay, who, who decided that Yael should be the first race to, to come? It was decided among many races in the galaxy. The reason being that it is believed that Yael is the closest representation to humanity there is in the galaxy. <clears throat> okay. So I... I know what he's going to say, and and I know that it will take another direction. And I, I see a point here that we can discuss. The point is, um, you know, like someone decided that the IL should come here, all right? Uh, the reasoning for that will come in, in this uh, next part of the audio but um, you know how how does that relate to the human collective to us our opinion and uh, of course our opinion isn't some guy that would talk to them in a linear fashion maybe or maybe it is um, it would probably be an energetic reading 
like Bashar says, like when uh, when he reads the energy of the of the humanity as a whole, in what direction we would go. But um, you know, who's making all the calls and? And how much does uh, our energetic collective uh, affect them? Is it is it perhaps only us that is creating all of this? You see where I'm going? Yes, yes. Do you guys want to fill Nick in on what we're doing, discussing? Hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. Welcome. Hey, what's going on? No, I kind of know what you guys are doing. Just listen. All right. Have you something you thought about during this? Um, well, I have my own perspectives on things, such as um, when you talk about there's other someone else making final call. Those beings in, in these other places are just us on higher forms or in other existences as well. Mm -hmm. At that point, there's no difference than our higher selves making decisions for us or our collective consciousness making them. It's almost the same thing. Yeah. So if if it is only us in the end, but but um, I know I also think that, but um, you know, in the practical way, in the end, there are still people here on Earth. In you know, our three D minds have to deal with some stuff, and we don't know what uh, what happens up there. I think that seeing the closest thing to human would be the safest route first rather than being in contact with a race that looked completely different than us as it would go for like panic and fear for the regular everyday person I'm getting something uh, there are other humans in the galaxy, not just us. I just got that. Yeah. And also, what 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 my point is also that you know, if if we think that that everything is created by us, then what happens for me? Is that everything just, you know, we should just sit here and wait for everything to fall in place. So, and th that is why this discussion is, uh, we are having it, you know, what, uh, what can we do? How can we affect? Yeah, I, I agree. It's just, it's really just getting out there and just sharing with every, everyone. Everyone you think, even if you think that they wouldn't listen, just to plant the seeds, you know? Just the little things that you say to spark people's interest. Yeah. Even if we don't think it, because, it, you know, they might walk away and scratch their head, you know, what was that? But down the road, it might come back to them and say, ah, I remember what they were talking about. Now it starts to make sense. You see? Yeah. Hero. Yeah. Uh, even if Gurk Vignir left, and it's a really big if, as in it's least likely to happen, even if they left, they could still communicate with us. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Shall we continue? And they they will not just leave completely. I don't think they leave completely if they leave. They will be back. 
they would probably just be communicating with us from a safe dis distance. Yeah. Yeah, go on, hang on. Okay, why not Pleiadians? Although Pleiadians are a wonderful species, our DNA, the Yu-Gi-Oh DNA, is even closer than theirs to yours. Mm -hmm. And therefore, so that is how it was decided. The closest DNA would be the first. So is it perhaps, are you thinking, because vibrationally we are closer? And therefore we wouldn't be... has something to do with the first contact. Because many of your people will not have high vibrations when we come. But will gain high vibrational effects from our arrival. But do, do the Pleiadians look more like us or do the Yells look more like us? It does not matter. Um, um, the Pleiadians can look more like you. However, you do not look like mice, and they share 97% of your DNA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I meant, meant that perhaps Yael are more energetically close to us. Yes, and that's is, the that reason. is true as well. And that is the reason for them. It's not looks. No, I was only... Uh, I was... Oh, okay. All right. So there will be a human element involved in first contact. Can, can I ask something? Um, uh, first contact, is that um, also in the contract at all, governments? No. They refuse to speak about first contact because they know it is unavoidable and unstoppable, and they do not feel that we are the the first step in it. Their only concern right now is that we do not take over. First contact to them seems implausible at this time. Yeah. It has been discussed, but they do not want any contract agreements about it because they do not even think it could possibly happen with they would consider it an attack. And so that is the treaty. What the treaty is about is not being attacked. A first contact episode for them would be an attack. Oh. Okay. So, so that they're, means that they they're have, burying their heads in the sand, basically. Cause they have buried it in many places. <laughs> oh. But that means that they get some kind of predictions in a negative, negative predictions, maybe from yes. the reptilians. They, the reptilians lie to them consistently, but give them technology so they believe them. Some of the, fortunately, the reptilians do not have as high technology as we do. Otherwise, your planet would probably be in ash by now. Oh, yeah. that's why they yeah. want it. Yeah. Now, can I ask you something? Um, after first contact happens, how do you how do you prevent the reptilians from also? Um, the reptilians will be put in their place because they know that we can overpower them. We have control over them in some ways if we were to come to Earth. Okay. But we cannot interfere with what they are doing because they are getting permission to do what they are doing from your own control. If they were forcing your people, you would have to stop them. But they are getting permission by your people to interact and to do the things that they are doing. So we cannot have a say on that. Right. Don't they um, like puppetize a lot of their government? 
does not exist anymore. Yeah, and that's why so many of us have problems with the government. Yes, but he did it voluntarily. It was not forced upon him. Okay, do you? He wanted the power that the reptilians offered. And now he has it. But he also does not have a personality or a soul. Can I ask you something? That this, this, can the Council of Nine help at all with this? The Council of Nine will be meeting at the same time in a different plane as us on the 28th of your February. They will be listening to our council. They will not be a direct part of it, but they will be judging the outcome of it and bringing some light to us so that we may continue to help. Also, the Federation of Light and the Galactic Federation will all have their say in this after it is done. But the meeting is between your governments and Gurkvik Nier. Yeah, yeah, I figure as much what I'm saying, like in terms of helping you. In, in they will help if yeah. you can. They are our allies in some ways. We do not all have the same ideas about what should happen or how to work things. But we do want you to exist. Yeah. So I think, I think maybe it's just the other way. Uh, we might have to do some praying for that day, so that we open up their minds and hearts on that day, so that they can. These two. Our people are doing meditations for this as well. We do not want to leave you. And we feel that it would be disloyal in some ways to leave you. But if forced to do so, we will do so. Okay. Yeah. What we're, would we're push gonna... you to that? What is I push you. what is pushing you to that? From what are they doing? What do they want? They have weapons aimed at us. All at all times. And they are forcing us to do what they're, they're bidding. They feel like they have the upper hand since we have the alliance not to attack. However, they are pushing us. They, I believe they know our intentions are pure, but they act like they, we are not having good intentions. And that keeps other people suspicious of us. Mm. Yeah. Well, I hope you, I hope you stay. We will stay as long as we can. Do you get guidance, like from predictions, uh, stuff like that? There is a prophecy that is unknown to humanity, but I cannot share it with you. But I will just tell you that we have spiritual lives as well. And we believe in prophecies, signs, and miracles because we have seen them happen. Many things have been foretold through the galaxy, many thousands and thousands of years. And some have come true miraculously. Unspeakable things. <clears throat> I just remembered, did you notice in the webinar when Takur was speaking uh, and she said uh, I don't remember exactly what it was about but she said yeah oh it was when Gabriel was uh, talking to her about her thinking you know not uh, that we are not so great and stuff like that before and then he then she changed her mind and then she said, yeah, that was a big, that was important for my ascension.
contract and stuff like that. They know a little more than us, but uh, but I don't think it's too much of a difference between us. All right, I just wanted to share that. Are wonderful and miraculous uh, beyond words. Yeah. That could not have happened without spirit being alive. Yeah. Um, just, just do. Um, these, there's been some predictions about the fall of 2016. Um, does that affect you in any way, or, or anything that you um, you do to help us? Or that the fall of 2016 is not a prediction that involves something from the outside, but something from the inside of humanity controls it. So I cannot comment on it because it is a human decision. Oh, okay. But, but will, will uh, your role... Yes, we will, we will be affected by it one way or the other, yes. But it is not for us to decide. Yeah. Is it a good thing or a bad thing for you? It could be either way. Oh. <laughs> it depends how you look at it. <laughs> of course. It depends on who you are and when you are. Okay, but it could be a good thing for humanity. It could, yes, very well be a wonderful thing for humanity. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I think we we have some work to do because we need to help in some kind of way. Because um, I I have a problem with um somebody else dictating on us what we can and cannot do. I understand that we were being abducted and the government trying to protect us. Yeah. I, can, I can see that. But if it's coming out of free will and choice and you're making your own decision of what to do, um, I think we should be able to. Because at the end of the line, um, you can only be responsible for yourself. You can't be responsible for anybody else. I agree. So but there are factors that rule every life in the universe. This is yeah. one of them. It may not be fair, but it is a fact. Yeah. We know. <laughs> yes, we know. And uh, I don't know. If there's anything else we can do to help, let us know. Yes. My time is spent now. Yes. So. I've overstayed because they are calling me back. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for coming and explaining things to us. I hope you are well understood at this time. Yes. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to speak with you. I do not speak much. You understand that I have many responsibilities. Yeah. But I found this to be an important meeting. And therefore, I am yeah. here for you. Yeah, thank I know that they are listening, and I knew that your questions were pertinent. So I hope they are understanding, and some will change their minds. Yeah. Even if it's just individuals. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not harmless, you know. Going, we're not harmful, you know. As in, you know, what can we do as individuals, you know? I don't know. You actually have, have great power as individuals. Yeah. With your meditation, especially you, Lani, with your psychic abilities. Although you are not aware of them fully yet. <laughs> but it's about, I, the way I see it, the interaction with. Um, you, um, it is, it's, it's my spirit, you know, it's kind of, for myself, it's my spiritual growth as well, you know, that's the way I see it, 
as well, you know. It's, yes, it's, I understand. Yeah, it's not harmful. Yeah. Let's we'll pull out your psychic abilities. All right. That was it. Any after comments? Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it, it puts things more in perspective. You know, fears, especially from the government sides, a lot of fears and fears that we have. I mean, we're just a reflection of our governments. I do understand this. But I still, I'm hoping and, and wishing and praying, yes, I, I still want Grip for Good to stand. I think they play a major role in why we called upon them, you know? Because it's not only this small group. There's at least over a million of us, I know, that wants them to stay. Uh, I, w <coughs> I would like to inspire and encourage um, loving people, both in this group and those that are listening, to send um, unconditional light and love to the uh, leaders of the planet so that their hearts are become open. Yes. So I think it would be good if we closed with that wonderful idea. Okay. Does anyone uh, would like to comment more? Just send them love. Like I feel we are all connected in a sense. Yeah. And also send any use for Gukuvenir to not continue with this fight with the government. They are part of it as well as we are part of it as the government. We are all fighting, but we are not really fighting. I hope that with us being the government, and I know Bashar says that. Yeah. I, I like that idea because yeah. that, you know, it means for me that... that um, that, uh, you know, it feels like you can't do anything here in this country. If I want the buses to go 24-7, as a, as a citizen, I'm, I'm a little tiny man whose voice isn't heard. Right, but right. If we are, if the whole country, like, says, hey, you need to fix this, or the whole city, you know, on a community level, we will, you know, together we fix it. Together we push the elite to uh, to change, and in all of the changes, all of the revolutions throughout the history, there hasn't been any of them where the where the world elite or the governments have did the change themselves. That that has not happened in, in history. There has always been change because the people came together and and because of the because of there there were so many they could push the government to change and um, yeah it brings up a great point it's when the people when the people lead the leaders will follow yeah exactly and many of us feel that we can't like, we can't just wait for the leaders to Lead. And that's the because thing. We, it's, it's, we have to lead them. Not, not so much. It's not so much pushing against, pushing back. It's really about allowing them to understand their fears, their doubts, to bring it to the shed light in dark places. You see? Yeah. Allow them to understand somehow. Get it to them where, why so much the fear base? What is it? Is it the control? But why control? 
Start asking the bigger questions. Keep asking why. Because there's a lack of love in them. Right. It always goes back to the self. But try as as we as we yes as we project out there to them. Really, it just send love. Because what else can we do? Yeah. If we are of love, why not just project project it? Exactly. And that would show them also that when the time comes for change, and when they get off their post, that it isn't hell waiting for them. No. Right. Allow them to see it as a win-win. That's how it should always be. Yeah. Say thank you, you know, for playing the dark side. Indeed. Thank you for playing the dark side of the force. Thank you for being the caterpillar. So we yeah, the catalyst for change. Mm. We became lazy. And how? How do we do this? By getting the word out there, affect those around us, without so much preaching and knocking on doors. Exactly. Of yes. But just by you know raising our own vibrations and making the people around us see what's he doing that's making his life so great. And then I would tell them, aliens is the answer. <laughs> but really, it's when you're walking down the street, you smile. And, you, and that, that smile, just that love, this outward, you know, that kindness, it goes a long way. Yeah. Because you affect everything. We affect everything. And it's nice just to smile at someone, even a stranger, because it's really strangers, strangers are just friends that we haven't met yet. You see? Mm. Yeah. Nice. Families that we haven't met yet. Exactly. Just imagine all the the certain parts of the government that have the weaponry, the weapons that shoot at those ships, those the fourth dimensional ships that shoot at them. Even they have families. Even they have sons and daughters that are you know, that are in schools, and they're flesh and blood also. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're on, all on this planet together, and just send love to them, realizing that they have their issues, they have their, you know, their doubts, their fears, their worries, but they're just, they're also human too. And they're just following orders. That's another thing. They're just following orders. Mm -hmm. So be the love, be the catalyst of change. And, and, and not hate them and don't judge them for what they're doing because they're showing us a world, what kind of world do we really want? want. You see? Yeah. Indeed. Hi, Caitlin. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hello. So, did you hear it, Caitlin? I didn't hear all of it, so I, I don't really understand. ...out like this and, you know, discuss around this, around first contact. Yeah, thank you, Hayan, and thank you, Sabrina, for uh, working this. This is beautiful. Thank you for sharing this. Yeah, you're welcome. Indeed. Barbara says, be the change you wish, you wish to see in the world. And I, I, this is so, you know, so a 
proof of what, what Bashar says. You know, since I joined you guys and I have changed my reality, everything around me has changed. I thought, you know, I thought to my highest self, why did you put me here in Sweden? There's no one awake here. And no one believes in aliens. And everybody's afraid of, of everything. And now since I've changed, I've found out there are so many people that, are, that is here and that is awake. And we even in Sweden have the world's biggest archive for UFOs and alien encounters. The world's biggest, and there is a very strong UFO uh, group here. And all of that just popped, popped uh, up in my reality now in 2014. So we're... we're were they always here, or did I shift to a reality where, where, where now they are here? So, a big proof for me. It's pretty cool, even you know, for this to take place. And I mean, think about what today is. Valentine's Day. Is, this is a me meeting like they are going to have. Yeah, and for and for the U.S., it's val it's for it's Valentine's Day. Yeah, and the, I heard the government listening to this thing, so <laughs> teaching them. So to all those governments out there, Happy Valentine's Day. We love you. Yeah, we love you, and we would like to support you more, whatever. But speak up, show us some hints for us to help you. You don't have to come out and tell us who you are, but you can. Show things behind our eyes and things. Yeah, we can yeah. support you. Yes. All right. And on that topic, if no one else has something to add, I think we can take Nitrous's idea in action now. So, Nitrous, what exactly did you did you think? Sending unconditional love and the purest light to all of the governments of this planet so that their hearts are open more. And to possibly really, and to, yeah, yeah, make themselves more open to uh, um, the light and the love of everything. Yes. Great. Maybe someone can send them a blessing and we can take a couple of moments to think about that. I would also encourage the people that are listening, all the light workers that are listening and loving people that are listening to do this too. Yeah. I have uh, something to say very quickly. To those governments out there who are listening right now, see the sufficiency within yourself. We know that you're following orders. We know many of you are kind of mm, wanting to change also, wanting to be the white knights. Remember something. We are all a part of it. We're all playing our role. It's what we accept. It's finding the love for self within self and seeing the sufficiency within ourselves, the brilliance within ourselves, our unpotential, our, our limitlessness for, for just unbelievable possibilities, probabilities. See the love within each other. See the godhood within each other. Not seeing it so far out there. It's all reachable. It is all within us already. That's the brilliance, the beauty of this planet. We are all here for each other, to work with one another. So find the commonality within us. It is spirit. We have a spirit. It wants to shine. 
It wants that freedom, to be able to feel that freedom. Allow it. It's about allowing. Much love to all of you. And so it is. Thank okay. You. Um, Kaylin, do you have anything to say? Is she there? Should I um, take it off live, guys? Yeah. All right. Thanks for everyone.